In a few minutes, you're going to build a 3D model of a globe. Your globe is going to be different than the globes you've seen before, which probably look like this. Your globe is going to be a lot more creative. It's also going to send an important message to your family and your friends that we need to do more to protect the environment and to keep the earth beautiful. We're going to start with a little bit of math. Map makers use geometry to make accurate pictures of the Earth. We used to use flat maps like this to figure out where we were going and to find countries on the surface of the Earth. But you can see, not only is this map hard to unfold, it doesn't really show the Earth very accurately. If I lay it out on the surface of the globe, is it flat? No, there's all sorts of creases and wrinkles and weird things going on. It doesn't really fit. And that's a problem, but it's a problem we can solve. And to find the solution, we're going to look at some fruit. I'm going to pause the camera for a second while the teachers pass stuff around. That will also give me a little time to fold this map back up. Well, I finally got this map folded up so we can carry on with our activity. I want to start with an important note, though. If you have food allergies or you just don't like the piece of fruit that we're using today, it's okay. You can just watch what your neighbors are doing. And for everyone else who is able to peel this piece of fruit, here's your challenge. I want you to peel it carefully so that the peel comes off in one big piece. It's okay if it has tears in it because that happens, but the bigger the piece, the fewer the tears, the better. If you think about it, we took the surface of a globe and made it flat. And when you do that, these tears happen. And an interesting thing is that map makers are cool with that. And so some of the best and most accurate maps in the world look a lot like your peels and mine. I'm going to show you an example right here. Your peel may look something like mine. Map makers use this shape to make accurate maps. This peel is a little bit neater. You can see how this shape could be neatly wrapped around a globe. Here's a sneak peek at a finished globe. It has four peels like the ones on the last slide. Are you ready to put your engineering hat on? Because now we're going to build the base for your globe. Here's a piece of wood that has a little hole in it, and here's a wooden dowel. The job is to get the dowel into the hole, but it's a little bit loose. So I want you to take about one inch of tape like this and wind it around one end of the dowel like I'm doing right now. There it is, a little bit of tape around the dowel. And then if I push the block onto the tape, there it is, it's all put together and it won't come off, it's pretty good. If yours falls off, just add a little bit more tape. In a minute, you're gonna get two sheets of paper like this. Take one of those sheets and fold it in half. Do it the long way and then you should wind up with a, a sheet that's folded like this. Then I want you to cut it in the middle down the crease. Again, the long way. Then take one of those pieces and fold it in half, like I'm doing right here, so that you wind up with a pretty neat little triangle like that at the end. And then take that piece and draw a little curve on it. Notice it's pretty close to the middle here and pretty close there, but it's very close to the edge up here. You're trying to create a shape like that peel that we saw earlier. And then you cut that out with your scissors going through both sides, and you wind up with this. And when I unfold it, you see I've created a nice symmetrical peel shape. And when I bend this over a little bit, it's gonna come into the shape of a globe, and that's gonna be good when we get this far. But right now, just make four of these, and I'll put up the pause sign to give you a chance to get your paper, make the line, and do your cuts. Now it's time for science. I said earlier that your globe will include an important message about protecting the earth. After all, the earth is our home. 
Scientists have a fancy word for home, which is habitat. And there are lots of habitats. The forest, oceans, swamps, coral reefs, all those are places plants and animals live. And I'm pretty sure you can think of some other ones. I'm gonna hold up the pause sign now for a minute while you and your teachers discuss habitats that you're interested in. How did that go? Did you think of some habitats that you're interested in? I hope so. How might you show those habitats on your globe? Before you do any work on the globe itself, I want you to make some practice sketches in your sketchbook. Start by picking one habitat and making a sketch of what that habitat would look like when it's all clean and healthy. For example, it might be an ocean with beautiful fish and kelp and clean water. When you're done with that sketch, make a second sketch, which shows the same habitat and what will happen to it if we don't take care of it. This time it might be a not so beautiful ocean with happy fish. It might be a sort of trash filled ocean with dirty water and unhappy fish in your second sketch. When you're done with those, pick another habitat and do the same thing. So in the end, you'll wind up with four sketches in your sketchbook. Two showing habitats that look great and are very healthy, and two showing what might happen to those same habitats if we don't take care of them. I'm going to hold up the pause sign again and give you a chance to do some sketching. Now that you've got some sketches, we're ready to get going on the actual globe itself. We're going to use a process that artists call collage. Collage is taking cut pieces of paper and putting them together to produce a beautiful artwork. Even if you haven't made a collage before, it's very easy and it's a lot of fun. I'm going to show you a few steps on the document camera that will help you get started. Okay, we're using the document camera to give you some quick tips on how to make a great cut paper collage. You can see I have my white piece of the globe laid out in the middle and I've cut out some other pieces. I'm working on an ocean scene and I want the ocean to be clean and healthy and beautiful. I'm going to put this blue piece down first because it's darker and I want it to be sort of seem like it's further away. So I'll put that in the middle and then I'm going to put this lighter piece of ocean over it and I'm even going to put the sky up above just like that for right now. Now, I want to have a, a piece of kelp in the ocean, so here's that. Let's see, right there, seems good to me. And I want to have a sandy bottom. I made it purple just because this is a beautiful ocean. Maybe it's tropical, and there's the bottom. Look at this fish. I'm going to put the fish right in there, just like that. And my final piece, I have this little puffy white cloud. Put that right there. So look at that. In just a couple minutes, I've created a pretty nice little collage. If you want, you can even add some pen or pencil to it. I'm going to make a nice little eyeball for the fish. Make him seem a little more lively. And I'm going to put some spots on the kelp because that's kind of what kelp looks like. And there we are. All done. You put that together now this way as, lay, as you laid it out. Now you can go back and glue it together. And you want to be careful when you glue it together so the pieces wind up in the right order. I hope you enjoyed watching me put together my little collage. One thing I really want you to remember, though, is I want to see your interesting ideas, your creativity. I don't want to see a copy of what I just showed you. That was really just to give you an idea of how to put things together. But the contents, I want them to spring right out of your imagination. So you don't have to do an ocean. You could do a swamp or a coral reef or a forest or anything. Also remember, you're going to make four of these pictures, so you don't want to spend too long on any one picture. Well, here we are at the most exciting part, putting it all together. Hopefully you have four finished cut paper pieces like this one, all ready to go. There's one more step for the piece, which is to make a hole in it like I did here. You can do that with a paper punch. You want a hole at each end, just a little ways in from the end so it won't tear. But uh, right about there, one on each end of every piece. And then you take all the pieces, stack them up. I did that here. You can see all four of my pieces. 
and I find the bottom and I kind of line up all those holes. That's what I'm doing right now. And stick them on that uh, skewer thing that you made earlier. Here's my skewer thing. Remember that? So one, two, three, four. Now they're all on there. So I have this, all four pieces on there. And I take the, the one that's on the top and put it in over the end. Take the next one that I can reach and put that one over the end. Take the next one I can reach and put that one over the end. And here it's easier if I do it on the table. And then finally take the very last one and, and put that, whoops, put that one over the top too. Like that. It helps me if I stick out my tongue when I work. So that's why I'm doing that. It's kind of messed up a little bit right now. You can see, but I'll straighten that out so that I wind up with the pieces all sort of facing out. That's what you want. There we go. Look at that. I got it all put together. There's four peels. Remember our uh, piece of fruit at the beginning? So we have these four peel shapes. They're all laid out there and it's good to go. The only problem, of course, is these things might come off the top. So you want to take a piece of tape. Here's my piece of tape. And you want to fold it over like a flag on the top. And that'll hold them all down. You can leave it like that. Or, you know, if you really want to be arty, you can make a little pennant out of it. Like it's at the North Pole or something. And just trim it out so it looks a little bit like a pointed pennant. And now you're completely done. Here's your globe. I want you to have a little gallery walk around to see what other, everyone else has done. And I want you to think about it, maybe even practice what you're gonna tell your family and your friends. What is the message of your art piece here? You know, here's a healthy ocean. That's great, that's what we want, but look, Here's an unhealthy ocean, that's bad, that's not what we want. We have to work for this and we have to prevent that. Those are the kinds of things you should think about when you take this home, show it to your family and your friend. I hope also that you'll keep it somewhere in your room and think about it from time to time. Number one, it's a fantastic example of how you used art, science, engineering, and math to make a project. All those things combined together in everything you do, whether it's art or engineering. Art involves a little engineering. Engineering involves a little art. They're all connected. And the other thing I want you to remember is that you had a success. This is a beautiful thing that you've produced and you should be very proud of it. So I hope you'll keep it, think about it, use it as an inspiration to do more art and use it as an inspiration to help our planet. I'm so happy to be able to work with you, and I hope you have a great rest of the camp. Thanks very much.